me I'm Susan and from Susan Routledge Consultancy and Finishing Church Health and Beauty Clinic and I hope you enjoy these videos that we put together. Hello my name is Maria Mason and I own and run Beauty Time in Bristol which is an award-winning salon and um, I'm offering some tips and advice on future businesses. Hi I'm here with the absolutely lovely Maria Mason <laughs> who uh, has to be one of the most inspirational people that I've ever come across oh, in our that's industry. So sweet. Um, and I'm sure as this talk goes on, you'll understand why. <laughs> um, but Maria, I really don't know how you very, in the first place, got started in okay. the industry. Okay. Was it? All right, let me tell you the story then. Um, I've been in the industry, I always count the first day that I went to college. So I count that because that was the first time I decided I wanted to break into the beauty industry. But is that from when you were little? Then did no. you always want to do it, or did you just? I've always, how did you end I've always up going been interested in beauty therapy. But what I did was I worked in hotels, ah. and um, so I was um, a banqueting manager, and I did um, big conferences. And um, but I was always interested in beauty, so it was something I always wanted to do. And um, and then I had all sorts of various problems of having babies and things like that. So I decided what I would do is I would get pregnant and start a new career. So, just like that. Yeah, so I just did that. So, um, so that's what I did. I, um, I had my little boy, and then I decided what I'd do is I would change careers, and I always wanted to run my own business, and beauty was the obvious one because it's something I've always been interested in. So I did that. Went to college, and um, and what I did was I was one of the first people that set up that concept to um, s uh, bring beauty to your home. So I would. A bit like the old Tupperware parties that were <laughs> many years ago. What I did was um, I set up like a hostess situation where, um, say, I was coming to your house, Susan. I would say to you, right, here's the booking form for the day. Book all your friends in. These are the treatments that I do, and then I would just turn up, be in one place. The hostess would get a free treatment, and then it would go from there. And it just took off, and I was just absolutely inundated, and. Um, so the point of that then was to earn enough money to open up a salon. So I did that for a couple of years and then there was a local health club that had a room for rent and I loved it because it was an old monastery and it wasn't very far from where I lived and so the whole concept, the whole Buddha thing and everything came together then. And um, I rented a room from them and I worked on my own for a year, it was really successful. And then I employed my first therapist, who's still with me today. <laughs> um, and then over time, what we did is I had a plan. I've always, I've always got a plan. Every day I get up, I've got a plan what I'm doing. And um, I decided that in five years, then I would double that space that we had. And then in 10 years after that, um, so at the 10-year mark, I would start to look for somewhere to buy. Because mm -hmm. I always knew I wanted to buy my own property. That was really important for me. Um, and I wanted it kind of with character as well. So where we are today is an old village post office with an apple orchard and a cottage. And we bought the whole lot and we have a 12 week window and we gutted it and rebuilt it. And that's where we've been most successful. And we won a UK salon uh, nine, 10 and 11 from there. Plus various other awards that we've won with um, the FHT and local awards as well, Gino awards. So wow. yeah. So has it all, when you're saying you've always had a plan, so you're one of these people who plan and then you don't sort of uh, we've, we've spoken to some entrepreneurial people who sort of just go with the flow something happens I and they think oh do, I'll go yeah. down that route but you yeah. always plan and execute what you I have a plan and I and I totally 100% believe that it will always happen it doesn't enter my head that it won't um, but also I kind of take risks along the way as well so so that's the end goal where I want to be and then along the way I'll think yeah no I'll do that as well I'll add that into the mix so, yeah, I'm always open-minded, but I've, I can always see where I'm going with the vision. And sort of, if you were advising a salon and they just starting out today, okay. would you give them the advice to follow the same path as you? or I would say do your research, have, have the vision of where you want to be, you know, because I think you need, you need to ultimately see that, that's what you're going after, but do your research along the way to take you to that goal. And who's been your sort of influences or sort of your inspiration to get you to where you are? Um, I'm always inspired, sometimes outside of our industry more than actually in our industry, I'm always inspired by people who treat their staff well because they are, that, that is the whole crux of your business. So I'm always inspired by John Lewis, people like that, you know, and I, and I go into any business or any shop and um, I see how they treat their staff and then I see how the staff treat 
the customer. So I'm inspired by good service in any business. Um, Sora Schumacher has always been one of my inspirations. You know, I met Sora very early in the industry, Sora from Glow. And um, what I love about Sora is she runs her business with the same concept that I run mine, and that's good old-fashioned manners and etiquette. And mm. I just don't think you can go far wrong with that. So mm. yeah, she's always been one of my like top favourite girls. And how long have you had the you had Beauty Time now? Beauty Time, um, 20 years. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> and how many are on the team now? 12. Yeah, I have a team of 12, and my longest um, member of staff has been with me 16 years, and my average member of staff has been with me kind of 10 to 12, 13 years, so quite a long time, mm -hmm. which is lovely because what's actually happened is, you know, we've grown as a team, and I've supported them, they've got up and got married and had their babies, not always in that order, um, and so I think that's really important. Um, and for clients too. Yeah, it's the, it's consistent, and our clients. I still have the same clients that come to me now. You know, all those years on, and I love that. And and they feel part of it. You know, they'll say, "Oh my, I remember when you started out. You know, I remember I was your first client. You used to carry your mobile couch up our stairs. We're like, oh, we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, like and portable, yeah, and yeah. They never were. <laughs> yeah, they were never light and portable. <laughs> it was like dragging them along. So. Where did all of the uh, the expeditions, the trekking, all the different things, okay. which I love about you, <laughs> I know, every time I speak to you, you're going to be doing something else. Where did that all start? Um, I think, you know, I'm very aware that we work in the luxury industry, in, that I'm very conscious of, and um, I'm very conscious that, you know, some of our creams can be up to 100 pounds, that sort of thing, and, and our treatment. So I think it's lovely for the clients that come to the salon to feel they're giving something back because um, I'm actually half Spanish, um, my dad's Spanish, my mom's English and um, English women I find on the whole, what they actually do, they justify having to have a beauty treatment so they'll come to the salon and they'll say, you know Maria, it's my birthday or um, it's Mother's Day and, um, and so there was always that slight guilt attached to having a treatment or buying something. So I thought what would be really good is if we started to do a lot of charity work. Um, one, because we wanted to, and two, because um, it, to a certain degree, it kind of took some of the guilt off of the clients. We would say, you know, um, do you want to sponsor us to do this? Um, do you want to sponsor us to do that? So one of the first treks I did was, I walked on the Great Wall, of, there are many, uh, I walked on the Great Wall of China um, and I did that for the NSPCC for children and we, and, and we do get everybody involved at Beauty Time so we'll say to the clients, this is what we're going to do, we're gonna, I'm going to walk on the Great Wall of China, where do you think we should give the money? Because ultimately they're giving you the money so then people will come forward. So there's this huge involvement with clients and staff. Um, and, and then I, I went on to do that. And then the other thing I thought would be brilliant is to get suppliers involved. So then I approached on that occasion Gino, our skincare Gino, and I said, would you be willing to give me a year's supply of facials that I can raffle on the back of that? Look at your little face. Ooh. <laughs> that is what I did, and that's what they did. And, uh, and so what we did um, is we sold tickets, um, and we, because it was a huge prize, we were giving our time, and Gino gave us their products. So it was still our time, and then what we did was we said, you know, that it's £10 a ticket, um, and that's a year's supply of facials. So it was an amazing prize, and people were quite happy to give £10, yeah. um, and we raised thousands. So I did the Great Wall of China, it was mad, <laughs> um, and, uh, and we raised thousands. And so I've gone on yes. to do other stuff like um, wing walking, as you know. Mm. And Very jealous. Yeah. <laughs> and other things. Um, I've been to the Berber villages in Morocco. I mean, I've done lots of things in India. I sponsor children to go to school in Africa. Um, uh, one of my clients set up a nursery out there. And um, through Beauty Time, our clients and staff, we actually sponsor 15 children. To, to go to school and we, I go out there once a year and paint murals on the wall and things like that, Ooh. handing out samples of creams. <laughs> so, so it's really nice because it's, you know, it makes the clients feel um, mm. that they're involved in other things outside of just coming and having facials. I think throughout the interviews that sort of comes through quite a lot, the, the giving back side. I think it's and, important. And, you know, people giving back even to, like, to, to the industry. I mean, you, you've done the same, you've given time to speak and, and, and be involved in things. Yeah, I think it's important because um, 
you want to inspire the next generation of therapists coming through and, and you want to do it in, in the right way. So it's it's good to give your time for free to inspire other people. You know, I'm a huge fan of doing that. And I would, and um, and I also do other things in the salon. Um, I go visit colleges and let the girls shadow me for a day if they're genuinely interested so they can come and you know be with me for the day. Um, and I work in schools for kids that want tag and have been excluded from school to try and inspire them to do better. So I work with the local judge um, where I live and he set a program up. They got really, they're really naughty, I have to tell you. The first time I did it, um, uh, literally you go in and um, they have a police officer, I don't know if you know about academy schools, and um, they have a police officer in with them and they're so naughty, the kids are really naughty. Um, and uh, the headmaster will come in the morning to point out to the and he'll just say, Morning, and, and like tap them on the, and that's a sign for you to know that's a really naughty child. But again, um, you know, I've been lucky, I've had good parents who've inspired me as well. And so for me, if I can inspire somebody there who doesn't get that at home, it's worth every moment that you're with those children. Um, so, and they've got lots of questions, and the girls are always interested in the beauty industry. So, yeah, it's another, it's another great avenue. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, just going back to sort of your career, main career. What would you say is, have you made any bad decisions that you wouldn't do in the future and you advise anyone not to um, do? I don't think I've done, I don't, there's nothing that comes to mind that I feel is, um, has been a bad decision. Um, I think when things have gone wrong, that is when you learn the most about yourself, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. So you almost, you, you need things to go wrong to be able to understand that and move forward. So I never, I never worry if anything goes <laughs> Just wrong. Just feedback. Yeah, I think, I think when we opened, um, when we bought the post office and we had 12 weeks to do it, we had to come in on that day. So I thought it would be absolutely brilliant to help on site. That was a bad decision. <laughs> that was a really bad decision. I am definitely not a decorator. <laughs> so, obviously, you're still involved with clients. I'm still involved with clients, and one of the other things that um, I found really useful is I'm trained in almost every therapy that we do at Beauty Time. So, not only are we um, traditional beauty therapists doing specialised facial work, we're also a very holistic team, and I've gone on to make sure that all of my staff are holistic. And for me, that makes a better therapist. It makes a very caring and understanding therapist. And I think I've made the decision to train in all of those therapies so that I can always be there to mentor my staff and have that understanding of that treatment for the clients. Excellent. And plans for the future? Um, I've just set up a workshop, um, I've just set up a programme in Bristol reaching out to front of house staff in big companies and um, it's called Presenting Your Best, so I go into businesses, I've just done Yo Valley Yogurts and I've got some other big businesses in the pipeline and I go in and I do a, a two hour workshop with them talking about um, skincare and makeup first off to make it really good fun and then talking about presenting yourself as the face of that business. So for me, you know, I do a lot of um, work with my own staff, um, whoever they come in contact with, be it the Saturday girl or the accountant, whoever, that is how my business will be presented. So trying to get that concept over to other businesses um, from the, the aspect of looking from a small business, everybody counts. And that's just going really well. I'm having a really great time doing that. Yeah, it's brilliant. Excellent. That's been absolutely superb. <laughs> Brilliant. Actually, I must just tell you this thing. This works. This is one more thing that <laughs> absolutely works for anybody in business. Um, is let your staff know where the money goes. It's really important. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're just about to do it. We always do it again when we have new staff, but uh, one of the first things we ever did um, was we sat the girls down um, uh, with a clipboard. I say we, me, sat the girls down with a clipboard and said to them, right, today we're going to talk about um, what's paid out in a business. And um, so I said to them, write down everything you think we have to spend on a business. No conferring or looking at each other, cheating. So they're like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, the girls call me Millie, as you know. <laughs> and so everybody started writing down furiously, and then I had the flip chart. And I said, right, okay, I want you to just shout out one at a time what you think it is. So they'll say, you know, the mortgage. You're like, yeah, the mortgage and the wages, yeah. And then they'll say things like, um, uh, tea bags. We say, well, it's not the most third important, but we do have <laughs> we do have to buy those. Uh, and then they'll go a little bit. They'll say products and uniforms and all those things. But then there's a plateau that they will reach, which clearly they don't understand. And then you'll say things like um, the, the bin in the car park. And, and there's like that look of horror, like, do we have to pay for that? 
you know, when, you know, they don't give it to us for free. And then employers, you know, tax and all the other things that come into a business. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, they have a very much clearer understanding and they have a huge respect for you um, as a business owner because it's all the things that, you know, they're not taught at college. So I think the more information you give them, the better understanding and, and they'll stay, they'll stay. Fabulous. <laughs> You're welcome. Good luck to anybody who's doing it. It's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> no, I would never do anything else. It is worth it. It's such a brilliant thing to do. I'm so, you know, I'm inspired by the people that work for me. You know, I'm inspired by my clients that believe in me. And, you know, I just want to do the very best for them because of all that do. trust. Oh, bless you, Susan. <laughs>